Hello everyone, Professor Kiyokawa, are you all seen online? Hello. Yeah. Okay, people uh, as, know that you you online, so you can start your presentation. We are on the recording, and we still uh, uh, call for people to come. And uh, yeah, so. Thank you for your patience, and uh, we are, we are listening to you now, Professor. All right. <coughs> I'm sorry. No, so um, let me start my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Um, my name is Kyosuke Okara from uh, Cyber and Security Engineering Laboratory at Nice, Japan. And today I'm talking about the smart reality modulation for inclusive society. So, um, so this is a little bit about me. So the, um, uh, <clears throat> I did my PhD at NICE uh, in 1998. Uh, and then now I'm a professor at NICE. So um, I don't know how many of you have visited Japan or even to Nara. Um, so the, the Nara, the city Nara is the first permanent capital of Japan established in 710 uh, and also the, it has around 300,000 uh, um, people as a city and also the number of prefecture holds uh, 1.5 million and it's about 40, kilo, uh, 40 minutes from Osaka and also six minutes from Kyoto and it's about uh, 500 kilometers from Tokyo. <clears throat> so this is nice and it is relatively new uh, graduate student, uh, graduate school, uh, service in 1991. And we have three divisions, information science, where I belong, uh, biological science and material science. And then we, are, uh, we have only graduate students, no bachelor students. And we are research oriented national university. And then the, uh, so the, uh, for example, that we have uh, uh, plenty much uh, research budget and it is among top five in Japan. So um, I will talk a little bit about uh, my past projects uh, before I will focus on the, the recent topics on the, uh, the reality modulation. So the, the, I started my VR research in around 1994 or five. And then the, the first project was uh, uh, to build the immersive modeling uh, tool so that, uh, that you can be built and assemble the, the, the 3D models uh, just like um, the Lego bricks uh, with, with the bimanual interaction. And then, <clears throat> so this is this movie was taken at, uh, around 1996 or 1997 or so, very old movie. And then the around 1999 to 2002, I was working for a National Institute uh, for Communications. And <clears throat> so this is uh, an old movie of uh, a mixed reality based disaster mitigation system. And then the, now the, those, these people are uh, discussing how the, the people should evacuate from the uh, volcano disaster. Okay. And then the, after that, I moved to Osaka University. And then the, uh, I did some uh, more conventional uh, standard AR uh, projects. Uh, for example, this is uh, the assembly support system. So the, on your right, uh, you see the, the some uh, reference model. And then the, by looking at it, the, you can actually assemble the real bricks and then the, the, uh, the system automatically recognizes the shape and the structure, and then the uh, automatically uh, suggests the next step of the assembly. And it also it, it detects the error. And so that the, anybody can assemble, uh, can finish the modeling uh, to the end. 
And also, the, this is a kind of unique uh, project on the smart office. And then the, this particular movie shows there uh, some uh, system that uh, shake you up, and then the, you have to be you have to keep working uh, when you are, even though you are sleepy. So um, this is so like this. Uh, the smart office uh, can detect uh, the worker's status and also the change the color or the music or the, the also give the uh, the multimodal stimulus stimulation uh, for um, the more efficient working environment. And also, I'm also interested in the head-mounted displays. And then the uh, I have developed a couple of unique head-mounted displays, which I will touch later too. And also, the even though the, I will not talk much about the, the haptics, but um, I will, I'm also interested in the, the different uh, modality other than visual, uh, the sense of vision. All right, so um, this is the, the technology roadmap. Uh, the many Japanese real researchers uh, came up in 2014. And then the, at that time, uh, we, disc, we had a uh, one day workshop. And then the, we, uh, the many, we collected many the young top researchers, real researchers in Japan. And then the, this is a result of the discussion. And so the basically, um, if, you, if you look at the technology roadmap closely, uh, you may find some unfamiliar terminologies, but uh, uh, in short, actually this technology roadmap suggests uh, that you know, the VR technology has to maximize uh, the people's capabilities and then they uh, suggest that we have to respect for individuals and the social inclusion and the symbiosis society. So the beer or the maybe the XR uh, technology should be used to help people in need. And then after that, the, in the year 2017, I moved from Osaka University to NIST to establish a new laboratory cybernetics and reality engineering. And then the, uh, this is the uh, kind of the circle uh, we can get from human to interaction to real world to sensing and display. So the, we are most interested in the human beings and then which is surrounded by the real world. And uh, here the real world means the other people uh, like uh, the conversation partners and also the, the geometry or the lighting environment or anything, uh, the communication, the resources, etc. And then we sense them using the, any a, a variety of technology like computer vision or machine learning. And then the, we also built uh, the special hardware devices. And then the, we modify the sensed uh, information a little bit to accommodate to the necessary uh, the demands of the human being. So the, by considering the time, place, or, or uh, the objectives, uh, we change, we modulate the reality, and then to, to give the better or safer or more comfortable environment to the human beings. So that is the mission uh, we set as a laboratory, and then that is so uh, we, as a laboratory, are pursuing the many variety of uh, research projects uh, along this issue. So currently, uh, we have uh, four faculty members, including myself, and then we have around 31 students, uh, and also the, uh, including the, those who have already graduated, uh, we have had uh, 26 international students. So this ratio uh, is relatively high the com the compared to the standard Japanese laboratories. Okay, so the I will now uh, focus on the smart reality modulation for inclusive society. So the, let's take 
the sense of vision as an example of the uh, reality modulation. So the, uh, when you look at the dictionary, uh, C, the word C has many definitions, like to perceive with the eyes, discern visually, or the discern or deduce after reflection or from information, or just understand. And so many meanings uh, can be referred in the dictionary. And then, you know, when we think about the human visual perception, so uh, the, there are many, many, many different uh, parameters uh, we can think of. So the, the, if we think about the typical visual perception, so we can think of field of view, how wide we can see, or the visual acuity, so how details uh, we can see, and also the visual uh, spectrum, the, from purple to red, and also the dynamic range, the how bright or how dark things we can see. And then the, actually, the, the, these are the typical visual perceptual issues, but we can also think of the, some other issues uh, in addition to these typical ones. So the, the, some people actually uh, cannot perceive the visual stimuli just like normal people, typical people, I have to say. Uh, so the, the, uh, because of the some reasons, uh, for example, the ophthalmological issues like strabismus or macular degeneration, and these are basically the problem of the eye. And then the, those people, for example, they cannot fuse the two images, left image and right image into one the, for the people with strabismus. And then the, uh, the some people, some other people have uh, some uh, slightly different uh, neurological the, the problems. And then the, uh, those people have a hyper, hyperesthesia, hyperesthesia or synesthesia. Those old people, for example, see colors by hearing sound. So the, um, these atypical visual perception uh, has been ignored nearly completely in the context of air or beer. But, um, you know, the, we have to be reminded that um, the standard visual stimuli cannot be perceived, perceived equally for all the people. And in addition to these typical and atypical visual perception, uh, we have to also think there's some extrasensory perception like a clear voyance or remote viewing or precognition. So the, these actually are not native normal capability that human has. Um, when we think about the capability of the scene, the, maybe we can, you know, the, uh, come up any new capabilities beyond the normal capabilities that human has as an animal. So the seeing capability has such many meanings. Okay, so these are the, again, the summary of the uh, many different perceptual, uh, visual perceptual issues. And then the, that is uh, from the typical vision, a typical vision, and also the some, some sci-fi take, uh, you know, the higher, uh, beyond the normal capability of the vision. Okay, so the, how many of you know the robot hooks? So the, he um, has, he's a famous scientist and who has written a famous book uh, called Micrographia. And then the, it is, uh, was written in the 17th century. And then the, in the preface of the book, uh, he said that, you know, the, the actually he's famous for the uh, observation of the, for example, the cell of a plant for the first time and then the, he recorded many, many uh, good uh, drawings. And then the, he said that, you know, the, the adding of artificial organs uh, or to recover some degrees of those former perfections. So basically, you know, the, he used the uh, microscope 
just to recover some lost capability human had before. So that is his idea. And then the uh, glasses have highly promoted our scene. And then the, the, he said that, you know, the, in the future, from the 17th century, there may be found many mechanical inventions to improve our other senses of hearing, smelling, tasting, or touching. So the, he thought that the microscope is a tool uh, to augment human capability. So um, here's another scientist um, I'm interested in, uh, Yako from Yukusko. Um, he uh, considered the concept Umwelt. Uh, this is a German word. It could be translated to the self world or the functional, no, self world. Yes. And then the, the, the animals Umwelt or self world is determined by the animal sensory systems. So the main the means by which sensory information is processed, perceived, and its action system. So basically, the world. The entire um, boundary of the world is defined by its animals' sensory systems and also the actuation systems. So beyond that, you cannot sense anything and you cannot touch, you cannot control anything. So the, the naturally, these sensory systems and the um, actuation systems uh, limit the world of the uh, of an animal, for example, a hen responds to the chick's song, but the, a hen cannot see um, the chick's differences very well, and the frog responds to the object's motion, and then they can catch a fly, but actually they um, the cannot see uh, the fly very well either. So in other words, in other words, by using some technology, if we change the sensory systems, virtually change the systems, or the virtually is changing the actuation systems, we can expand the world, we can perceive, or we can control. So that is the idea. So the um, actually the, this kind of human augmentation. It's not a completely new idea, as I have explained. And then the, even the similar technologies um, have evolved already. So the, here are uh, um, some three similar uh, concepts, sensory processes and kind of sensory substitution and the sensory augmentation. So sensory processes restores a lost sensation. So for example, the cochlear implant uh, is already uh, an established treatment, and then that is covered by the health insurance, for example, and then the, that is to recover the lost hearing sense, hearing uh, capability. And the sensory substitution uh, is something to substitute the lost sensation by another sensation. For example, the famous device Optacon. Uh, converts the, the visual vision sensation to tactile sensation. So using this device, uh, you can actually uh, touch or see the book even you are blind. And the sensory augmentation enables to sense information beyond its original capabilities. So that is what I will touch in the later part of this talk. So the, you, may, you may wonder the, what the examples of the human augmentation are. So the, the, I don't know how many of you use a hearing aids in a daily life, uh, but actually the hearing aids have, been, uh, have evolved uh, rapidly at an increasing uh, incredible uh, speed. So the nowadays it is very normal standard to use a digital signal processor, and then it's getting smarter and smarter. For example, the some hearing aids can do the simultaneous translation, and or the speaker independent processing, or the sound synthesis. And you can think of even smarter uh, functions. For example, you can only hear 
uh, the, the voice of your family in the crowd. Or maybe the, you can hear the sound only from, from, only from the, uh, the person you are looking at, even under the super noisy environment. So that kind of the uh, combination of existing advanced technologies uh, can be done for the hearing aids, uh, advanced hearing aids. And it, the, this technology, the advancement can happen for the uh, head mounted displays. So the, as you know, the head mounted displays have evolved uh, at a rapid speed um, as well at an unstoppable the pace. So the eventually the, we envision that one day it will be more convenient. It will be more normal, more safe, um, you know, the, to wear the Hetman display from the morning to night. So um, towards the smart LED modulation, uh, in the case of the sense of vision, so we have to do three steps. One is visual display development. So the ideally we want to develop a perfect head mount display. So the that can the you know the uh, present any any conceivable uh, visual stimuli to the human eyes. So that is beyond our current technology. But steadily, slowly but steadily, the head mount displays are improving. And the second step that is um, normally ignored is a uh, vision correction. So the uh, to to support uh, the people with atypical uh, visual perception, so the, we have to correct the some visual stimuli to adapt to those people. And the third step. Finally, uh, only after uh, we can the present any visual stimuli to the human eyes with or without a typical visual perception, we can think of the hum human augmentation. In this case, the, from the perspective of the sense of vision. Here, we have to think how we can intelligently assist humans by changing the uh, sense of uh, natural sensation like vision. So the first step, hope. Um, I will not touch the in detail, but uh, the, we face many challenges in headman displays. We want to the downsize and we want to make it light. Uh, we want to have a wide field view. Uh, the super, you know, the great uh, angular resolution and then the accommodation and also the occlusion. Um, I don't know how many of you have tried HoloLens, for example, but uh, all the images are uh, semi-transparent. So those uh, computer graphics overlaid onto real environment can, cannot completely hide the real environment behind. All right, so um, here's a brief History summary of a Hetman display, um, but I uh, was skip it uh, because of time. There. And then the uh, we can think of the uh, wider field view Hetman display, and also the uh, we can think of the uh, high resolution display. And then normally the, uh, the, for a long time we have had a trade-off between the wide field view and a high resolution, but. The nowadays we can think of 8K, 8K or even 16K display. And then eventually uh, I think uh, we can eliminate the trade-off. And then the, um, those field view can be wide enough and the resolution can be high enough at the same time. About accommodation, the, if you know, the, if you have tried the Hetman displays, you may notice that it, um, you know you cannot show the virtual image at an uh, uh, arbitrary distance. So the uh, even though you have a, a binocular disparity, the image itself will appear at a fixed distance now. And then the we can also think of the occlusion, as I explained. 
the normally the just like on the uh, far upper left image, the those images appear in an uh, optical uh, Cecil Hetman display, uh, semi-transparent and ghost-like images. But uh, we want to make it uh, more realistic. The opaque image is very important, but they're very difficult to present with the optical Cecil Hetman displays. So um, there are many issues. And then this is one of the uh, research uh, results from our laboratory. Uh, which we will present in two weeks or so at the ISMO 2020. Uh, but we have developed a super wide field of view uh, optical Cicely Hetman display with occlusion capability. So the, uh, the it's super wide view and also the, it is uh, can change the transparency uh, uh, pixel wise. All right. So the next issue uh, is the color reproducibility. So the the optical Cecil Hetman display, um, as I said, all the images appear uh, semi-transparent. That means that all the images shown on those Hetman displays are influenced by the background uh, real environment. For example, um, if you have a blue wall. And then if you want to show the yellow banana, and then the yellow banana will look green before the blue wall behind. So that kind of the uh, in interference between the real background and then the presented image uh, becomes uh, the big problem. And then the color re reproducibility uh, need to be considered. And then there are some uh, research on uh, the studies that uh, mitigate this problem. And then the next issue is the calibration. So the, the normally the issue user AR or MR or something uh, with a smartphone, then the, the those uh, virtual uh, objects will appear on your smartphone screen. And that is not a problem, but um, the, in the case of the optical Cicely Hetman display, those uh, image overlay, image mix uh, will uh, occur on your retina. And then that is why uh, the, even though you show the same image, so the uh, one, someone will see it at a correct position but uh, for some other person, the, because the UR eye uh, will be moving slightly different and the eye to eye distance is slightly different. So the, um, the, some people will see those images at a slightly different position. And then the, that will result in a misregistration. That is a problem for air. So that is why uh, the eye position 3D XYZ position of an eyeball must be measured in real time, uh, which not which is not be considered in um, in many in normal Hetman displays. So um, there are many other issues. I will skip uh, the explanation in detail, but um, the as I have explained, the many many technology barriers remain. If you want to show the you know, arbitrary image to the user's eye uh, to, to uh, be comparable with their, uh, the performance, the capability of the human's eye. So human eye have a very wide field of view, uh, like uh, for example, horizontal field of view uh, can span 200 degrees, but uh, the no Hetman display can support that wide view. All right, next issue is vision correction. And the vision correction uh, need to be considered for people with atypical uh, perception, visual perception. And for example, the people with strabismus uh, test the, their uh, visual capability with this kind of special uh, equipment, uh, which is very expensive and time consuming. You have to see a doctor, you have to go to the hospital. 
and then the uh, you by special procedure you measure the how differently you see the images with left and right image, right eyes and then the this procedure actually can be done with uh, not with a uh, very expensive special equipment but uh, with uh, the headphone display so all the visual uh, vision uh, examination can be done with a very cheap head mount display. So you don't have to pay the, the, the medium gain or something, uh, but uh, that you can do the uh, eye examination at home uh, with a smartphone. So the, we have uh, developed uh, the visual head chart test, for example, and then we have confirmed the similar performance so the, uh, I'm saying that, you know, the without buying the expensive devices that you can do the you know, health test, health test at home and they can reduce their uh, medical cost. And uh, for example, uh, this is uh, uh, the collaborating uh, of ophthalmologist. And then the, the, he was very happy about, uh, about the system. And then the, it could be actually used at uh, the medical department. And uh, this kind of examination uh, can be expanded to support many more diseases, eye diseases. And then the, uh, with a cheap headman display, for example, uh, to some extent, the, you can test uh, if you have an early symptom on the uh, Parkinson diseases, for example. And then the not uh, beyond just the examination, you can finally correct uh, this visual perception. So the, this upper row uh, shows the typical perception, visual perception. So you can think of an eye as a camera, and then you can think, uh, you can think of brain as a uh, spatial temporal filter. And then you can think of a typical visual perception as a some the the atypical parameters for the camera or the spatial temporal filter. So that if we think, if we can develop some inverse functions for those atypical camera or atypical temporal, spatial temporal filter, so we can finally uh, recover the normal image at the final step. So the, by uh, putting the inverse function the, uh, to the input image, and then they show that converted image to the people with atypical visual perception. Those people can see the, the similar image as the typical people. So this is the concept of the visual perception of the correction. So the, this is a very fast, uh, simple example of the visual correction. So the, the, those people with strabismus uh, cannot fuse two eye, two images into one. Um, but if we shift the an image shown presented to an eye, then you can virtually eliminate the strabismus, and then they, they can recover stereoposis, so the uh, they can see uh, the, the object in stereo. So this is uh, probably the, the most simplest. Uh, example of the vision correction. And then the, you can do that the, for other uh, atypical visual perceptions. For example, in the case of the macular degeneration, that you can pre distort the images uh, to see, to present to the eyes. And then the, those people with the distorted images uh, can now see the straight images. Okay. And then the similar thing uh, can be done for the uh, more complicated uh, visual perception. So there's some people with uh, the ASD. Uh, sometimes see the visual noise when the, they enter into a noisy spaces. And then the, this kind of visual noise are uh, very, very difficult to eliminate. So the, our approach is to change the input image, input the video to a safer one, very similar, but a safer one that would not trigger this uh, annoying visual perception. 
and then by wearing the video system head mount display and then they can uh, you know be, live like normal uh, without having these problems so that is our vision actually the currently the video system head mount display are uh, too bulky uh, to use for daily basis on a daily basis but uh, we envision that those displays will become small and they become more comfortable to wear in the near future. And then we are also developing uh, smart eyeglasses, uh, smart sunglasses uh, that can change the brightness of an object uh, that is uh, actually object based uh, based on some uh, the AI based object recognition. And then, for example, the, some people see, some people will lose the color when they see the fast moving objects. So that is why we detect the moving objects and then the virtually they reduce the frame rate and then the, the like a stop motion. And then so that they will not trigger uh, the fast motion based color loss. And then the, um, so this is a kind of trade off that uh, they, um, they can see the environment uh, with color. So this is an uh, uh, example of the smart sunglasses. Okay, and then the, finally, we can think of the more advanced uh, visual uh, experiences. For example, uh, by having a couple of the stereo cameras and then the head mount display, uh, we can now develop, uh, for example, the, you can zoom, all the zoom, uh, Google. So just by half closing, squinting your eyes, uh, when you find that when you want to see the far objects, and then that will, uh, that will be enlarged, like a sci-fi movie. Or um, if you have a moving objects, and then the you want to see the if you want to see the future trajectory of those moving objects, uh, that future trajectory can be calculated and also shown to your headset, and then uh, that future motion can be uh, more easily estimated, and so that you can play um, tennis or badminton better. Or um, so normally, you know, the uh, visible wavelength is fixed to each animal, but um, you can virtually change the, the wavelength, visible wavelength, by using the different camera and then also the uh, using some color mapping. Then normally, if you just do the color mapping, the simply you will lose the important color information because you are changing the color to different colors. But uh, the, by detecting the, uh, the which, which of the color or for example, the temperature is important. And then if, you, the, if the, that area, for that particular area, the, if the system thinks that the temperature information is more important, then you can the, change the uh, normal color to the temperature information. And if you think that the color information is more important than the temperature, and then you can keep uh, the original color. So that it's kind of uh, adaptive visualization of temp uh, temperature in this case. Or um, you can change the viewpoint uh, by using this um, automatic 3D reconstruction. So the, uh, imagine you are uh, now the, examining the layout of the furniture and then the, you place some virtual furniture before you. And then sometimes you wanna see them from top, but uh, it's impossible but, uh, because you cannot fly and then uh, because of the collision. But um, if you use a, a virtual environment, uh, you can change the viewpoint. And then the, that this kind of 3D reconstruction, reconstruction uh, can happen uh, while you're moving around. So normally in AR, if you wanna change the viewpoint, you yourself have to move 
but uh, uh, by combining A and B smoothly, uh, you can have more, much more flexible view, viewing experience. Or uh, sometimes, you know, it is very difficult uh, to see, to know what was happening in a very uh, high speed the event, then the you want to look back what what happened. Then uh, you know by combining the high speed camera and also the RGBD camera, so we can virtually recreate the high speed the three D scene, so that uh, uh, you can play the event at an actual size at a slower pace. So that you can slow motion the for the real environment, and then the, by the, the conducting the simple user study, uh, we proved that uh, the uh, the free uh, viewing of the three D event uh, at a slower pace uh, will be helpful for understanding the event. So this kind of the changing of the time. Uh, is also helpful. This is kind of the, another way of uh, visual implementation. And normally, the uh, when do when you do AR, uh, you just add more information. It's kind of the addition. But uh, sometimes you want to remove uh, real objects from your scene. So this is kind of subtraction. So the, this is called a diminished reality, and this is more uh, technologically complicated, but sometimes more important. So imagine if you were um, you want to see how the new furniture would look like in your living room, and then the uh, normally you can overlay new furniture, but um, that will be overlaid onto the old furniture. So the, you have double two furniture, uh, the new one and the old one. That is just confusing. So that you have to erase, remove the old furniture, which is unnecessary. So the removing unnecessary objects uh, is quite important. And then they can be done by the advanced diminished reality technologies. So this kind of the diminishing uh, visual information is sometimes helpful. So there's sometimes uh, you have to focus on your task, your work, but uh, your surrounding environment is not uh, calm, quiet. So the one way is to completely shut down the surrounding visual environment, but that is dangerous and that is not very kind. So the, uh, our approach is to reduce the visual stimuli to some extent, uh, to change the color or the brightness or introduce some um, blob. And then you can focus on a task while you are still able to attend the surrounding environment. So another example uh, is to help you uh, improve your confidence. So the, this particular system uh, help you to have a higher confidence by showing yourself in a video monitor, uh, but in a slightly different way. So the, we change the brightness, contrast, or the, the facial expression a little bit, or the posture. And then the, we found that you know, visual modulation will help you have more higher confidence. So this kind of the visual uh, modulation will also help uh, some tasks. And also the visual modulation uh, can also be applied to facial expression for other people, a conversation partner, for example. And then, it, then the, in this case, even though you are not good at making facial expression, or maybe not good at reading facial expressions, uh, by exaggerating facial expression, you can have a better uh, you know, emotional exchange, better conversation quickly. And then the, that kind of the uh, visual uh, modulation can be further enhanced by using AI-based image conversion. 
So the one example, simple example, uh, is to expand the field view. So the, this is a normal uh, video game. And then the outer image is the, um, in real time, the produce, the computer generated image. So the, uh, <clears throat> that is solely uh, inferred, estimated from the image inside. <clears throat> so the, even though, you know, the image quality is not very good, but, um, you know, the, normally in the race game, uh, you will focus on the, the center of the screen. So the, the, the poor quality of the uh, periphery uh, will not be a problem. So this kind of the image uh, estimation, the can be used for other purposes. For example, in this case, the 2D video is now converted to a 3D video uh, with a wider field of view. So the, uh, you can just put uh, the 2D image, 2D video, and then you can now uh, jump into the video and then it can, can make a real space. And then GAN, the uh, AI-based real-time image to image translation can also be used to change the appearance of a food. And sometimes you cannot eat some food you wanna eat because of religion or the disease or something. And even in those cases, uh, you can change the appearance of one food to another and then interestingly, um, those people uh, will also uh, be able to sense the, the food um, that you wanna taste. So in this case, the, the, in reality, uh, this person is eating the salmon noodle uh, with a plain uh, the taste. But uh, visually, they, uh, they, he is now eating the ramen noodle that is uh, much more uh, oily and then more tasty actually, uh, but not healthy at all. And then the, interestingly, the, he tastes the ramen noodle, not the salmon noodle. So this kind of the um, gastrotomy modulation is very difficult um, in a chemical solution, but uh, you can do that to some extent uh, just by visual modulation. And then this will uh, improve the quality of life uh, for people with disease or something. And then this system has been featured uh, by a famous TV program in Japan. And in this case, the just, just having the, in reality, just having a uh, white stem device the through the Google, she is now testing. She is now testing the curry, rice and the curry. And then, the, interestingly, she also smells the curry rice. So this kind of AI-based uh, visual modulation uh, can be also used to uh, simulate uh, some unwanted the environment uh, situations, in this case, fire. So the, you reconstruct the real environment and then the, uh, you uh, estimate the vulnerability or the material uh, with the AI. And then the, you can better simulate the fire in the imminent environment before you. So the, this kind of the uh, intelligent uh, environment recognition can be used to enhance AR experience. So in this case, the we are now consulting a local fire department, and then the uh, is going to be proven to be a much more efficient uh, compared to the just video training or the VR training. Compared to VR training, the using the, this kind of AI simulation will make you, uh, will allow you to do the fire simulation under the uh, environment you are familiar with 
then the, you will you know, more appreciate the importance of the fire uh, prevention. Okay, so the, as I have introduced, the, we are now doing the many, many research projects combining AR, conventional AR, VR, MR with AI. And then the, this is the final uh, slide of this talk. Uh, real demodulation changes how we perceive the real world and then it has uh, infinite possibilities, we think, and uh, we are having more and more opportunities. And the challenges would include uh, to, to think about how to best deliver sensory stimuli, like uh, how to develop the perfect headman displays, ideal uh, visual displays devices, and also how to best utilize AI and eventually how to best redesign human senses to maximize our happiness. Okay, so this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much.